Hey, that's it. We are live. Hello, folks. Hello, everybody. I can see that there are some of you there. We say hello to Dorman, Niels, and Don, Return Viewers Guide, and uh, whoever Hi, else is out there. So thank you so much for turning out and uh, uh, and joining us here. Um, was Fred Flintstone a god? Oh, here we go. It's, it started off already. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So um, we're a bit sort of overwhelmed by the way that um, so many new folk have come on board and become subscribers to the prehistory guys. So this uh, is by way of welcome to you all. And I've never had this before. I can't actually keep up. There are so many people saying hello, hello, hello out there. So That's yeah. fantastic. I I'm, hearing, I'm hearing you twice. Okay. Um, well, you, have you got up? another machine in the room that is... Uh, no. Well, that's... Uh, Am I not hearing it out of your speakers? Um, sorry? Am I not hearing it out of your speakers? Um, I'll put uh, headphones on in that case. Hold on a second. You say some words to the nice people. I'll say some words. Well, it's, it's fantastic uh, to have you join us so soon in the evening, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, tell us where you are as well, because I, I, I won't think, be able uh, to see because the thing's whizzing up. So uh, <laughs> is it? That's fantastic. Well, it has been, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. So, I well, mean, for example, Christopher's uh, Chris Lawley says hello. Only discovered us on Wednesday. So yeah, that's great. That's uh, you know. So the um, the the purpose of uh, uh, of this um, call to say uh, hello to folks that haven't come across us before and and welcome. That is fantastic. I'm uh, I'm going to put my earphones on because I'm still hearing you twice. I'm still well, not just you. I'm hearing us twice. Okay. Um, and I don't know how that is. Uh... Oh, you you have got it. Oh, do you know what? Yeah. I know where it is. You're hidden. Ah, uh, you've got it coming back to you. I don't need to wear the headphones after all. No, you don't. Take them off. It's all right, folks. You're in safe hands. Has <laughs> <laughs> that done it? Yay! Cool. All right, that's much better. That's much easier for me. Yeah. Yes. Um, that, that, John that says, perfect. Sandra. Hello, Sandra from New Orleans. Yay! Oh. Yeah. Hello. That's a, the great thing, you know, Rupert, that so many people that, that have discovered Standing With Stones for the first time, um, uh, the, the vast majority of them are from the US of A. You're on the other side of the pond, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, fantastic. Um, Kath, though, says evening from North Lanks. So there we <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Hello, Kath. <laughs> yeah, we thought we should say hello because uh, it's just everything's gone a little bit crazy recently, hasn't mm -hmm. it? And um, uh, we don't really know why. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're just delighted that so many of you uh, have enjoyed what we're doing yeah. and uh, so thought we should say hello. Well, the other thing is, you know, we're overwhelmed, overwhelmed in two senses. One that, you know, usually you'd like to be able to reply individually to people, you know, when they comment and, and stuff like that. But it's gone a bit bonkers. I mean, there is, we can't keep up at the time. So overwhelmed in that sense, but overwhelmed yeah. uh, in the, the feedback from folk has just been absolutely gorgeous and it's crazy for us after what 12 13 years since we made the film to be yeah. getting this um, um yeah. vindication from uh, from you chaps uh yeah, yeah. hi tracy coming from atlanta peace Hello, love tracy. We know that name yeah excellent lovely to see you all lovely to see you all so um yeah the the job um that we're trying to do uh, tonight, you know, as I say, it's for people who come to us uh, as a result of seeing Standing with Stones for the first time, um, and um, you know, it's it's not like it's gone proper viral, but you know, for a film about <laughs> rocks in fields, it's doing pretty uh, good. Yeah. Um, so, what we're going to do yeah. this evening, we thought we'd do is give you a bit of background about how it. Standing with Stones got made in the first place, and uh, please do if I can keep up with you. Um, I'll uh, if you put questions in the comments, we'll do our very very best to um, answer them, and then we'll explain what we're doing now, um, and uh, you know 
what we what plans we've got for for the future and uh, maybe you know how you can uh, help us get to do what we want in the future perhaps yeah yes yes we had various plans for this year but obviously lockdown has uh, has hampered quite a oh, few yeah. of those so there's a number of things that are being pushed straight into 2021 because they just can't happen this year yeah. Can um, I just answer a question from Christopher? He says, it's probably me, but your podcasts seem to have vanished. Mm, I, I think they're there somewhere, <laughs> uh, Christopher. Uh, I can't sort that out um, um, right now, but uh, they're all over the place. The, 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 the podcasts actually exist on YouTube and they exist on our website. Um, uh, they, they exist as um, properly, um, uh, uh, what's the word? distributed um, via iTunes and, and all that, the audio-only versions, of course. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry I can't um, catch up with uh, you all that are leaving comments, um, but uh, like I say, it's great to meet Amazing. you. Also, before we proceed, the thing to know is that, you know, we do uh, these lives and uh, like this because we're, what, about a thousand miles apart, aren't we? I'm in Warwickshire in England. This is true. And, I, I'm um, down in the south of France, Rupert's, near Spain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm about 50 miles north of Spain, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, it may be our age, but we find it um, miraculous that we can uh, <laughs> uh, uh, do It's true. This. The tech works. The tech works. Still, even so, very frustrating because, uh, you know, normally we uh, we get together fairly regularly to be in the same place at the same time. And, of course, with lockdown, that's just not happening at all. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell so you what, so something that's already coming up and we need to get to at so some point, and that's the tree rock, the fossilised tree, etc. Yeah. OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the, <laughs> it's amazing how many people have been uh, emailing uh, about that. We... Uh, uh, we did a, f a couple of we did a podcast about it, or we mentioned it in a podcast. And yeah. there's actually a blog spot on my website. Yeah. But, uh, we'll, about, we'll, um, uh, but we will we'll, we'll fill you in later. On, on that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. But in the meantime, um, yeah. I mean, before we get to your questions, otherwise we'll get s <laughs> we'll go off in all sorts of directions. Uh huh. How Rupert, how did we kick off? How did this how did this begin? Well, um, I knew you as a filmmaker because you're a very good filmmaker. Um, <laughs> and I came to you with an idea for a film, didn't I? Uh, and, you did, uh, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, and we decided that it was a bit ambitious. Um, it, it was completely unrelated. Um, it, and uh, we decided that was a bit ambitious. So uh, let's do something else together because yeah. we wanted to work together. And uh, so what was what was a mutual interest? And uh, archaeology, uh, standing stones, were a mutual interest. I'd been uh, for quite a few years. I'd been leading people on tours around prehistoric sites and stuff like that. And uh, uh, and Mike was very much into. Uh, Neolithic and Bronze Age stuff as well. So we just decided that that's the subject we'd tackle. And uh, <laughs> that was where it started. Little did we know. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, my history and background uh, is uh, as an actor. And I'd had a, uh, you know, I wasn't a known filmmaker, but I, I, myself and my wife had had a video production company for um, quite a few years uh, doing corporate stuff mainly. But I always wanted to do, uh, you know, <laughs> make a magnum opus, <laughs> special interest stuff, you know. And I had been making films along that line. But, you know, it, it just, when it, when we found out that we were both interested in the same stuff, the kind of that was when the penny dropped about you know what the thing to make was was uh, was going going to be, yeah. uh, and and figuring out how to do that. So um, yeah, we thought well we'll go to the BBC, and then we thought no we won't go to the BBC because they'll take it away from us because we we've jumped out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, and uh, eventually we um, uh, we 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 got. Um, um, sponsored 
you know, um, there was a, a, a generous sponsor, and we uh, were able to, uh, you know, start off uh, on our own, just determining we're going to do this in our own way, in our own time, and release yeah. it on DVD, and it's going to be the way we want it, uh, and nobody's going to, you know, tell us how to do it. That was pretty well uh, yeah. how, it's, how it started. Yeah. It's uh, it, it really was. I mean, to call it a labour of love is is an understatement because whilst it was, you know, any sponsor is a generous sponsor, but it still was the two of us living on a shoestring yeah. for a long time, <laughs> and we promised our wives that we would never do it again unless we had proper money. Um, <laughs> uh, it really was done on a shoestring, and so we would uh, uh, <laughs> we we would hit the road for about a month at a time hmm. and uh, oh, just we had such great adventures yeah. uh, we, we really I, wish, you know what? I wish there'd been a film crew following us you know yeah. <laughs> so that there was a making yeah. of film that would be just as, yeah. uh, just well, as fun do you know what? It, that, that's an astonishing thing that yeah. uh, that uh, you know some people might not hi, David, hi David, that, David from Somerset that just uh, said hello. Hi, David. David uh, is a patron of ours, you know. Uh, hello, oh, David. Um, <laughs> um, it's, the, it's the fact that even though the film Sorry, was I'm only... Sorry, saying hello to Elizabeth, Elizabeth Dale as well. <laughs> hello, yeah. Lizzie. Um, yeah. the, the fact Thank that you, in, in 12 years since we actually made the film, technology has changed utterly the amount of times that we were filming at a location and saying oh god if we only had enough money to have a helicopter shot here or what have you <laughs> and of course uh, a matter of years later now everybody takes drones for granted yeah, we, we have, have a drone we no, really didn't uh, have them we could do it now but yeah. um, but you know that was impossible and uh, and even you know the sort of follow drones that you can just set something to Trug along behind you, uh, so uh, you, you know. It, oh Lord! It, uh, and the amount of gear that we were carrying. Oh yes, as well. that as well. <laughs> uh, you know, because when we did, there's the sequence um, up on Pike of Stickle at the Axe Factory, where we ascended into a cloud. Yeah, we did. And uh, and the thing about that particular uh, mission was that we arrived in the Lake District. Uh, hey, it, from Derbyshire. <laughs> Bongo and it was a Fury. That's a fabulous it, name. I hope it's real. <laughs> <laughs> it was a time when uh, Britain had been underwater for weeks, and uh, and we arrived in the Lake District, and we parked the camper van up, and we sat in it for three days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because it was just lashing down. We tried to get up. Uh, to the, to, we tried to get up the mountain on a couple of occasions, but there's there's one particular place where you you cross a little stream that comes down the mountain, and the the little stream was a raging torrent, and we were carrying, you know, our our own <laughs> very expensive camera gear, and so we didn't want to take the chance, and uh, and so in the end. Because of the schedule that we had, you know, we had to be up in Scotland for, uh, you know, we had an amount of time that we could be on the road. So we, we, it was, it ended up as a, well, what the hell, we've got to do it. And so we climbed the mountain. We'd been hoping that it was going to be nice weather. In the end, it was disgusting, but it turned out to be far better than if it had been sunny. Yeah, yeah. So I'll yeah. tell you, what, I'm going to pause you a moment there because Paul hey. was just. Uh, asked a question. I have to say, Rupert can't see this. He's, he's just he's no, just communicating I, I with just thought, me via yeah. Skype, so he can't see all this. Paul Paul Lee who, uh, has said, Rupert, if you had the choice, will you trade Standing with Stones for a cosy BBC archaeology stint? There's a good one. <laughs> that's that's a great question. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, no, and I'll tell you why. Because I mean, whilst it would be lovely to have a BBC gig. The trouble is that, um, and I don't want to speak unkindly about anybody, but uh, something that happens a lot, and it doesn't matter, uh, it doesn't matter who you are. I don't know if any of you know George McGavin. He's a very good friend of mine. Uh, he's the uh, the uh, entomologist bug man on BBC. Um, 
Uh, now, him and Brian Cox as well. Now, I know uh, uh, firsthand that both of them have submitted ideas to the BBC because they work for the BBC all the time. Yeah. They've submitted ideas, we want to do this, and they don't hear anything about it until suddenly it's on television being hosted by somebody else. And it's just because the commissioning editors at the BBC will go, oh, do you know what? We'll do that with so-and-so. Which is why we were in talks with BBC Two to do a, a broadcast version of Standing With Stones. And then it went all quiet and, uh, and out it came, their version of it, with Neil Oliver. Because Neil Oliver is the BBC face of archaeology. They just went off and did their own version with him. You can't compete. And so what that means is that you basically become... It's a bit like, you know, newspapers being yesterday's fish and chip wrapper. Uh, that, you know, you, you might get good funding to do a nice archaeology programme on the BBC, but that's it. They have got no commitment to you beyond that. And so I think the fact that, you know, Mike and I made this 12 years ago, and you look at our output over the last two years where we've been doing short films and podcasts and the like, and and gathering, you know, I mean, you sitting there listening to us now, you know, is, uh, is, is testament to that. You know, people who have... Uh, who've found us and like what we do and are taking an interest in what we do, which, you know, you're you're giving us the impetus to actually carry on and do more things which yeah. are going to have a, a longevity that, you know, that a one-off or a two-off on the BBC just probably wouldn't have, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. if that answers the question. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, we, we must do a shout-out for... Um, um, Come on, you guys with your oh, <laughs> aliases. Well, Lazzie McLandrover. Lazzie McLandrover. I don't know who you Lassie are. McLandrover. Anyway, <laughs> any, anyway, Lazzie's got a wife called Haley, and she has been suffering a long time with being dragged uh, around. Uh, <laughs> yeah, ancient stone bothering. Uh, Lazzie with, and Haley. Yes, where where yes. are you based, Lazzie? <laughs> Uh, uh, we'll see, see in a moment. So yes, that's a yeah. big shout out for Haley and all long-suffering wives of uh, yeah. of of stone geeks, yeah. stone bothering people. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know it's funny. I I never get used to the uh, the online uh, thing, the social media thing of pseudonyms because yeah. you know I just call myself to, to me to call no, myself. I just else. I, it's just I. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I struggle enough to uh, to remember <laughs> just general stuff. Yeah. Hey ho, Margaret says hello from the Lake District. Mark Bailey, good friend of ours, and Alan oh, who's yeah. recently joined us on Patreon says uh, Patreon says greetings from London. Who has watched the film again? Us. Says we're very talented. <laughs> this is you know this is this can only be bad for us you know Rupert yeah. heads will get far too big do you know there are eighty three people watching us at this moment wow yeah, wow yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you We've folks well, very before. welcome all right sweet um, uh, yes. anyway uh, let's keep the keep keep on track um, yes yeah ask us uh, questions about the actual making of the film um, we took two about two and a half years to complete it all together two two years prep and filming well, we, we could, and we could, we could backtrack a little bit couldn't yeah. we because originally we had an idea the original idea was that it was going to be for there was the BBC used to do on BBC two there used to be a slot there was a 10 minute slot in fact, it's way Rem, where, where Ray Mears kicked off with Bushcraft mm. television that he did this lovely little 10 minute slot um, where he would just show you how to light a fire or show you how to make a flute out of a piece of birch or, or whatever. And uh, so we thought that would be a good slot, you know, every week just to show people a new site. Yeah. And Forgive so me we went objecting momentarily. I will do this yes. momentarily to acknowledge people and who's here first time from, from Derby, and uh, Laurie Crater, who is that wife that gets dragged by ra around by her husband. <laughs> or is one You're of, very one of them anyway. Thanks so, for joining. Yeah, thanks for being Thank here. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Rupert, uh, interrupted. No, no, that's all right. We, uh, so, we, yeah, we, 
Well, we went to Dartmoor and made essentially a, a, a 10 minute film. And, uh, and, and it was then, it was when we'd made that, that the pilot, that's when yeah. we realized, yeah, the pilot for it all. That's when we realized that if we actually took this to a broadcast company, they would be telling us how we had to do it. Yeah. And we weren't prepared to have that because we're not prima donnas. It's just that we knew what we wanted to do broadly. Uh, so, so we decided to do it on our own and it, took how long does it take to write oh i don't know it was quite a while yeah it was quite a while um because apart from anything else mike and i went off uh, you know in in separate directions gathering together we made our own lists of the sites that we thought we should include in the film yeah and then we brought those lists together to see what we had in common. In actual yeah. fact, we had pretty much everything was in common, wasn't it? There were a few that we, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I think I think, some, I think so. <laughs> the the choi choosing thing was a, is an interesting one because everybody has their favourites. Yeah. Know. But surprisingly, not every single prehistoric site is that photogenic. Mm. You, put, you try pointing a camera at it, it just doesn't read, you know. So there was that element in there as well. Actually, yeah. uh, Lizzie's just asked a, a question. Uh, Lizzie Dale uh, says, is there anywhere that you planned to include in the film but didn't, and why? Yes. Well, there's one that's in... Uh, it's not outtakes. It's in the uh, additional features, uh, which, uh, which you can find on YouTube. Um, there's a place called Urach in Southern Ireland, which is, it really is like something out of a fairy story. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a stone circle on the side of a lake. And on the opposite side of the lake, there's a waterfall coming down the hills. Sorry, and, sorry. Uh, uh, Rachel Mandela is a wife that drags her husband around stone circles. <laughs> yes. Well done, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Must have addressed the balance quite right, too. Um, <laughs> um, but I had, uh, I had for a long time, I'd had this dream of if, if we could film there under a full moon, that it would just be a gorgeous sequence and uh, we got there oh god it was like a swamp we trudged through mud to get to this place it's still an amazing place to visit but the the full moon yeah, forget it you know it was just thick cloud it was horrible weather um so that didn't go in the film even though we did actually get there um, by and, which time we could only light it by the light of your head torch. Yes. I yes. remember. You, you also had a, um, what do you call it? Um, you had a hand torch that was a... Uh, oh, it was, that there's thing. a name for those. Is there? Well, I can't help you right yeah, now. All right, moving on. Anyway, and, and, the, yeah, <laughs> the point is, it, 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 your act didn't get into the film in quite the way that yeah. we wanted to. It, and that it, was a function, actually, of us uh, trying to grab off more than we could chew because there are so many sites down in that area, in, in the Brera Peninsula, mm. um, that mm. we, uh, we, had, we tried to play a game of getting as many sites in as we could. And by the time we yeah. had tried to get as many sites in as we could in the day, it was... Uh, the well, day we were was late. Going. However, however, Griff was says rubbish. the Irish footage was especially beautiful. Do you know what? It was, and that's entirely down to Michael. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I can't take any credit for that at all. Yeah. Uh, Sue Butler's you know partner just stays in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Do you know, there, there, was, there was one other site. That's the wrong way to describe it. One other thing that I so wanted to go in the film yeah. and it didn't happen. Um, and our suspicions have been uh, only vindicated in the last year, actually. And this was, uh, I don't know if any of you know what Cranags are, but in oh, Scotland yeah. <laughs> and also some in Ireland, uh, Cranags are, uh, they're structures, buildings, 
that are out in lakes and it's so they so the builders would make a uh, an artificial island that they usually they would do it with stacking boulders up f uh, from the lake bed they would stack the boulders up to create an island and then they would put a structure on top of that and they had always been thought to be iron age but there was just something that really made us think no they're older than that sure they're older than that and so we wanted to put them in the film and i had this vision in my head of early morning mists and rowing out across the lake you know with the camera looking at the oars where the oars are just cutting the mist and uh, and to go out to a, a cranog it and could happen it could we, still happen rupert yeah <laughs> i think we we need to try to make it happen um and we basically, because some of the locks are tidal and there had been enough rain, God, it was just, it was a monsoon, like we've been seeing more of it in recent years, but back then we hadn't. Uh, the locks were all so um, high, uh, the water level was so high, we couldn't find a crenner at all. And we drove around the locks for mm, hours and hours. Uh, and hours and hours, and hours a whole flipping day. It was, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? And I wondered what you were on about. <laughs> I was sort of a reluctant passenger with the car driving around Loch Orr yeah. thinking, what is yeah. he on? What is he like? It's and then we shame. didn't Same find way. one. <laughs> <laughs> Loch Orr is very up. beautiful. but uh, Yeah, we gave up. But the exciting thing is that only uh, in the last 12 months, yeah. Uh, it has been proven that some of these sites that were always thought to be Iron Age are actually Neolithic yeah. and were in use for a very long time. Not so only now that, but one, uh, the next podcast to come out is an interview with... Um, ah. Yeah, Mr. Duncan Garrow, Dr. Duncan, Duncan Garrow. Garrow. Professor Duncan Garrow, let's not do him down. I think he might prefer that. Um, but um, Duncan is, uh, he's one of the archaeologists who's been working on the, uh, on the excavations on the Cranachs. Yeah. And we have an invitation because obviously they can't do any of their field work that they were planning on for this year. So we have got an invitation to go up and, uh, and see them actually on site next year so we'll uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see if so, we can get yeah the so out. we've got a few questions coming in maybe we'll part billy's got how do you think those huge top stones were moved into place on uh, on top of the standing stones i think bill you uh, presume billy you're thinking about uh, uh stonehenge trial of them yeah the, uh, well yeah that is yeah. that as well. well we'll park that for a little bit later lizzie Lazzy says, um, sorry, sorry, Lazzy. <laughs> what do you guys uh, think the main regional differences are, are in stone circles and why? Ooh. Yeah, recumbents say, long Meg and her daughters, etc. Wow. Uh, well, we could do a whole podcast on that, if not a whole film. Uh, we could. Yeah, we could. Um, yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I think we need to sort of wrap up because we're, you know, we're well into um, uh, ta time now. Uh, please keep the questions coming about um, the making of, of, of standing with stones. Um, uh, you know, I mean, the bottom line is, um, you know, we're so chuffed with how it how it came out, and. You know, it, it is such a nice thing, as I said earlier, you know, so many years on that it's got legs. It's got a, a life again because soon after we'd made it and we put it out on DVD and we gathered a, you know, a small um, fan base, <laughs> shall we say, a group of enthusiasts who have followed us ever since. Yes. But it was a small but, you know, enthusiastic uh, band. And we probably wouldn't be doing this, you know, here now if it hadn't been for them keeping us, you know. But we had to step away because we need to earn money, do other things. And uh, a film about Standing Stones is not the way to fame and fortune, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so, you know, Standing with Stones was, was uh, sort of out of the way for a bit. But we always had the Facebook page. And people always were always popping up saying, when are you going to make another film? When are you going to make another film? But it was only two years ago that we, um, two and a half years ago, we started thinking, yeah. well, well, let's get back on this horse, and and um, we can't yeah. make another film because we, you know, that's a, 
you know, we don't have the money. But doing a podcast and something like that, keeping the idea uh, up there mm. and, and, and floating and, and, uh, and um, kind of here, here we are. Yes. Um, yeah, so I mean, we another we another precipita precipitating factor was uh, a lot of the stock of DVDs were lost. Um, I don't know, sometime early. It was two thousand in, in, in the distributor's London warehouse. Lights. Yeah, so yeah. That, that was a, a bit of a killer at the time. Yes, ours went up in flames. It was very yeah. depressing. Mm -mm -mm. Um, anyway, but um, yeah, we so you know we, the, obviously we have every intention of making uh, another stonking film. We make short films at the moment, but we we want to make uh, more full-length films, but they require proper budget. And, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, I, and I have tricky. to say, you probably see a comment from David, David Potter there, as he says. He's been following, he's one of that original core, hardcore, standing with stones <laughs> And yes. that have been always been there. So you yes, know, David you know, is very much one of the team. Debt of gratitude, uh, uh, David. And um, yes. yes, you can, um, yes, you can sort of partake responsibility in the fact that here we are sitting here twelve years later and uh, yeah, doing, doing this. Uh, Julian uh, Parkinson, in your film, you visited Bleasdale, Lancashire. We did, and uh, you'd like to be able to discuss it. Uh, more about that with us how okay. could uh you contact us um yes what's the best way um uh, uh rupert either one of us at the prehistory uh, guys dot uk we'll, we'll yes. do that yeah, yeah. Um, uh yes i mean there's all manner of ways of contacting us but if you yes if you you know do it yeah. through uh through the website it is probably Twitter, easiest. Facebook, but um, yeah, the, the address is either Rupert or Michael at the prehistory guys dot UK. Okay. Um, so that was. Hang on, I, I'm just trying to make notes because otherwise it'll run away with me. Yeah, sure. Who asked the Who asked the question about the regional differences? Oh, 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 oh! Scrolling back. Uh, that was Lazzy. 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 Lazzy McLandrover. Do we know you by another name, Lazzy? I feel uh, we do. So that was Leslie, and then somebody asked, "How did they move the uh, uh, the yeah, the?" Yeah, Billy Bradford. Billy. Yeah. Okay, and and then who just asked about Bleasdale? Uh, uh, b b b b b that was Julian Parkinson. Julian. Okay. Um, yeah. Um. Well. Uh, should we start off with how did they move the tri the uh, the lintels? Well, I'll tell you. Well, or do you want to do something no, else well, first? Let's do do questions uh, and ask and answers at the end because um, okay. we just want to talk briefly about what we're doing now because people have seen the film, they not necessarily have seen the other stuff that we've been producing since. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I know a lot of you have, um, but there's a few may not. So it's it's getting everybody on the same page and and up to speed. I think that's the uh, the important thing. Oh, thank you, Billy. I'll um, tell you about that later. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, we, um, yeah, so that's the film. i tell you what, one thing we're thinking of doing, and that's a sort of watch party with the film. So uh, we, we go through the film and, and maybe Rupert and I can, uh, you know, sort of, talk words about it while we all all watch it together by some that could, that, that could be embarrassing it means could be could be yeah <laughs> <laughs> and of course i tell you what i'm going to point people in the direction of the outtakes of the of the gag reel the blue of reel. course you are of course we are yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would, people would be going off searching for it now it is there it is on the channel some way some way down Somewhere there. Anyway, here we are now, prehistory guys. How did that happen? Well, how did that happen? Do you know what happened? Um, because the the uh, the film was taken up by uh, a couple of television channels, community television channels, where it was split into seven chapters, which was basically the way we divided the film up through yeah. regions. Yeah. And so it was split into chapters so that they could show it over a week. So, you know, a, a, a section a day for a week. And they, they repeated it all the time because uh, it was quite popular. And the thing was that 
we were getting emails for a full 10 years. Emails from people saying, uh, saw your film, loved yeah. the film. And I, <laughs> I thought, well, to be honest, I've sat down and I've watched some lovely stuff on television, but it has never occurred to me to uh, look somebody up at the end of the film and send them a, uh, send them a message. So, uh, uh, so I thought, well, if there's that many people who are really enjoying it, then we probably ought to be doing something about it. So I called Mike. I mean, you know, we're, we're great friends. You know, we've, we've never not been in touch. But, uh, but I, you know, I called Mike and I said, you know what, this is silly. You know, we're both doing our other work, but, you know, we have such a good time when we're working together that it's just silly that we're not doing this. And this was um, over two years ago now. So uh, we just decided that, yeah, all right, then let's do this. And uh, so we've been, uh, we've been whipping this pony for a couple of years. Still very much a labor of love. I mean, we, uh, uh, we spend a, a crazy amount of hours uh, a day, week, whatever, um, you know, producing all this stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, on the basis that at some point it's going to kick in and uh, we'll actually be making a living out of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, but, you know, people are loving what we're doing. You know, the fact that you're sitting there watching us um, when uh, you've probably all got yeah. better things to when do. We, when we uh, set off do, doing the, the podcast, um, we didn't have a really clear idea of where we were going or where where it would take us. No. We we. we just knew that putting material out, you know, keeping the ball uh, in the air, you know, would eventually draw some uh, some interest. And uh, it was getting also getting the balance because, you know, principally we started off, we always started to think foremost, first and foremost, in terms of making films because, you know, that's what we've done and, and uh, you know, what we're interested in. But the podcast kind of took us in a different direction really and and mm. because they're relatively easy to do and easy to produce and you can cover a lot of ground in a podcast without actually traveling to Orkney or traveling to <laughs> and also we found that, that our remit sort of broadened out uh, over over time we started talking about stuff outside the area of the megalithic you know the mm. megalithic sites and extending it back in time uh, mm. and and talking about human origins from time to time but also coming forward a bit in time into the um into the iron age as well so the the standing with stones title or brand uh, if you like wasn't quite fitting what we were what we were doing so mm. on you know having been given good advice by a friend friend of ours we've had a look at that and it was only towards the back end of last year that we changed the brand to the prehistory guys. And actually, that mm. made that made a that was a step change, and that yeah. made a huge difference in yeah. uh, in, in terms of you well, know, how people it, related it, to us as well. The people that hadn't didn't know we the are film what it before. says on the tin, aren't we? Now, yeah, so, yeah. You know, um, it is true because the other thing is that you know, we. Uh, I think one of the reasons that uh, you can always correct us. One of the reasons that people like what we do i think is because we only talk about stuff that really fires us up yeah you know it's like we'll you know we we talk every day and it's like have you seen have you seen this article and uh you know and we're digging into if you pardon the pun uh you know we're digging into all sorts of aspects of archaeology and when we find something that is really you know it's different in whatever way it's like well, we've got to share this and and so it was progressively becoming less and less about megaliths yeah um you know so it it had to stop specifically being stones and uh, and talking when that about, uh, happened our you know brains started to explode because we've entered all into all this at a time when um, new discoveries and new techniques are revealing uh, mm. uh, uh, so much previously unknown stuff that we're sitting, you know, in this archaeological milieu where there's just so much going on and so much information yeah. coming in that we mm. have quite a hard time sifting through and, and getting to the getting to the yeah. bottom of it, and which is why. Um, 
latterly, you know, starting, I think there's, you know, really one well, the beginning of, of this year, to get real archaeologists in, real uh, academics, yeah. you know, people that have been on the on the front line, you know, uh, yeah. that have deep experience and are, are absolutely on the front line of uh, developing um, ideas about... Uh, about prehistory and, and what was going on and getting them in into the program and that that's just been great. We've uh, had, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, it's made a big difference because you know we've now got a real network of uh, yeah. of uh, some who've become friends you know around the country who um, you know it means that if anything crops up that we're not sure about because sometimes you know journalists even even specialist journalists who are writing for science journals they're still journalists and sometimes they just can't help themselves and you read a headline and you think really you know and but now we're in a position where we can contact archaeologists directly and say what's the truth of this you know and um uh, and you know you get to the nitty gritty which is it's always just as exciting. It's just without the flannel of a misleading headline. Yeah. yeah. So folks that um, you know have have come to us afresh and, and are sort of meeting us for the first time, do have a look round both on the um, uh, YouTube channel and uh, on the uh, website at uh, theprehistoryguys.uk, where all our public stuff um, is stored, as it were, both the podcasts. And the films, and of course, you know, we we um, have not been solely doing podcasts over the past couple of years. There are a number of nice little films, nothing as epic as uh, Standing with Stones itself. Um, yeah. But we, we, we've got three, um, you know, we pushed the boat out a bit, you know, that we're really proud of. We started off at... Um, uh, Devil's Quoits in Oxfordshire, and we made one about uh, the Rollwright Stones. And just this summer, um, I joined Rupert down near uh, where he lives in the Longer Dock, and uh, we made a film about the dolmens down there. So we did. Know, but there, there are there many. have been other little, you know, sort of uh, vloggy style things that I've made, and uh, yeah. But we want to keep those yeah. going. But of course, latterly with this, we haven't um, been able to get out at all. However, looking forward, what's the plan, Mr. Soskin? Well, the plan, we made a rod for our own backs in a good way. We said, um, because we, have, we haven't talked about our Patreon uh, site, uh, no. that uh, we, uh, we have a, a Patreon site where people who want to help us do what we do, you know, you can come on board and uh, even, for, you know, for as little as a dollar a month. Um, that it uh, people subscribe, they pay a you know a dollar a month, five a month, whatever, and uh, and that helps us to make each new. Uh, I mean, even for for our monthly live broadcast, not this one, we do a Patreon live, and you know there's a there's a whacking lot of research that goes into every single one. So you know the people who actually. Uh, put a little bit of money into uh, our kitty to help us develop the work it makes a huge difference yeah. and um, we said that when we get to a hundred patrons uh, <laughs> we're very close now yeah. when we get to a hundred patrons we will make a film about Kalanish do you know I think we're only five or six people off a hundred yes. yeah. um, now Kalanish you know, if you ask us individually uh, you know, what is our favourite site uh, in the whole of the British Isles, um, then we always say Kalanish. It's just, it's a site apart. It is like no other. And uh, so we decided that that would, be, uh, that would be the marker. So that's plan A, if you like. Um, and I think that's strongly in our heads to go and do that in 2021 2021 we have got honestly 2021 is going it would to be, be a number so it would be busy yeah it, it, it would we would do a number on colony it, it's going to be a proper yeah. film um and uh so the, you know the thing is <laughs> obviously these things don't take five minutes to write and prepare no. so um, um <laughs> I, I think also um, yeah, to be fair from a financial point of view we'd we'd, we'd do a separate uh, crowdfunding 
thing to, We'd have to, know, to because for the production um, budget. But uh, uh, that's a, that's a story for another day. Yeah. Yes, it it does. It costs it costs fat money to make good films, mm. and um, uh, not least of all, the fact that uh, you know when we're actually filming, that's that's me and Mike meeting in the middle. Uh, so all the preparation work. So I'm doing all the research and writing at the beginning. And then we go away and we film it. Well, once we've come together and planned how we're going to do it, yeah. and then we come back from filming, and Mike then has however many months of uh, of editing and uh, and in fact, you know, I'll say this because he won't say it himself. But those of you that have enjoyed Standing with Stones, you think that you know, all right, I wrote it and I was the face of the camera. Mike was cameraman, lighting man, sound man, producer, director, wrote the music. Folks, he wrote the music. Um, yeah, it's and performed it, and and performed it. He's a tour de force. Well, some of it, most. Yeah, he is a tour de force, and um, that's you know, it's a lot of work outside of the filming. So all in all, uh, you know, any of the big projects do take us um, a long time to put together. Yeah, yeah. No, it's. Um... I'll tell you what. I'll 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 put the um, I'll put the link to Patreon uh, up there. Um, mm. You know, so if any, anybody feels inclined. Um, so, oh, Phil says thanks very much for your help with um, uh, his discovery in the Eden Valley. Phil, you are very welcome. I'll, do you know? I'm, yeah. I won't be mysterious. Uh, Phil is a follower of ours on the Facebook community, uh, and uh, Phil sent uh, a message the other day that he had found something, and it's so exciting when people do this. Yeah. He had found something on an old map. Well, no, Phil, you knew about it from when you used to live up uh, in that area, I think you said, didn't you? Um, that it's something that it's on old maps, and it's not there anymore on the ground. And so Phil sent a message saying, what is this? Can you tell me anything about this? And no, we couldn't. But oh, my God, look at this. This is something important. Sorry, I can't show a picture. And that's a shame. Yeah. Um, but um, anyway, so uh, and I'll, it's, it's good that you, you're actually there, Phil, because um, uh, this is a, on the map. It's a very complex structure of its marked as stones. Um, but it's like a cross of rows of stones. There's a lot of stones there. And it's been completely ploughed out. And the local archaeological society have told Phil that they think, because it was, it, it was ploughed out in the 19th century or the beginning of the 20th century, around that sort of period. And there's nothing left to see now other than what's on these old maps. And the local archaeological society have said that they think it's a temporary Roman camp. And, Phil, I will say to you, that is not a temporary Roman camp. <laughs> Just no way. Um, so, you know, we're, yeah. we're going to carry on pursuing Can't say it. more yeah, than that, really. So it's a question of no. watch this um, space, I guess. Other than yeah. I contacted uh, someone in the prehistorical society who contacted a colleague of theirs up in the region and they are looking into it as well so uh you know uh, don't worry as soon as i hear anything i will let, yeah. i'll let you know what's come up uh, but it's chris, exciting when people find things out of nowhere yeah. you know christopher lawley says a look at the equipment uh, we use would be fascinating and uh yeah we'd like to do a a show uh, about the kit and uh, i mean it seems silly doesn't it but there are people who are interested in <laughs> Uh, kit i know, know i am that there, there are times but we don't where, sort of presume that it would be interesting where, where, so, but, <laughs> there are times when, when mike and i just you know we show each other this piece of look at this you know, it's a piece of metal you know but look how beautifully it's engineered and we know how uh i'll only say one sad. thing uh, uh christopher that, that uh, the kit we use now is very different from the kit we used to make the film back then Hugely different. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Hugely. It's crazy. It's it's crazy what we can do, and you know, I'm still. You know, the only thing I'll say about kit is that for me, it's an exercise in, in getting the most out of 
what you can with with fairly modest equipment because neither of us are wealthy people and uh, you, you the the kit that's available at very reasonable cost and and is capable of performing so brilliantly these days is quite extraordinary so uh, yeah and christopher said you forgot to mention the computer animation thank you very much indeed yes i did i tell you You're what right. somebody told I... me go and make a computer animation you know about bloody stanton drew or anywhere uh, now i'd go what how did <laughs> i do that <laughs> do you remember how you did that do no. you know <laughs> just you know yeah. but it's the, the mindset is well if somebody else did can then i yes. suppose i can it's the same yes. you know just find the kit find the it, software it's all it. about problem solving you do it you know yeah yeah so. yeah um, <laughs> yes. Um, oh, were you having a conversation there, Jennifer? With, um, sorry, yes. And we we're talking about Patreon. Um, but, uh, oh my goodness. Um, right. Okay. We're getting towards the hundred. That's all I'm saying. Oh my goodness. Um, oh. It is the on Patreon. Uh, yeah, you're not only helping us, but the, there is some um, other stuff on on Patreon that's exclusive. To, you know, because fair dues you get a little bit of payback for um yes for your vote of confidence uh in us we've there's a at the moment there's a regular um uh every monday uh, uh patreon exclusive podcast called the monday megalith uh which is fun uh you see that cabinet behind uh, rupert's head <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. uh yeah just a little behind the scenes things for he's doing vid videos every n now and again for our Patreon supporters, taking through the very wonderful little uh, trinkets. I, that I, found I, that I have my, it's, it's, it's um, yeah, Rupert's cabinet, 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 cabinet of curiosities, but it's yeah. uh, I, I've got my own little mini museum, if you like, of stuff that I've yeah. collected um, over the years on my travels and things like that. And some of it is, um, well, it's all fascinating stuff. Well, you wouldn't keep it, would you? But yeah, I've yeah. got some. I've got some quite rare pieces in there, and so that's and, um, nice to be able to share things with yeah, everybody. On uh, um, yeah, some patron levels get uh, early access to uh, the podcasts we do and the films, and the get cinema quality films. The cinema quality ad-free films um, are available on uh, mm. on Patreon as well, amongst other stuff. Oh, and the monthly um, live we do in there. Yes, we do a live podcast specifically for patrons. That is true. Where we, do, so yes. we go through the recent news and we, you know, chat about what's on our minds at the time. You know, what's come up and uh, mm. and answer questions just like this, actually, but just for Patreon folk. Yeah. yeah, but it's fascinating. You know, it's it's actually good fun to be able to pull together. Yeah. If you can imagine that uh, globally, there's some phenomenal archaeology being done all the time. Yeah. And so, you know, we have information coming in from all over the world and it's uh, collating that information and going, oh, what should we put in the next broadcast? And just cherry picking three or four yeah. news items to, that we talk about. Yeah, it's been lovely, uh, to see, uh, um, lovely to see people having conversations amongst themselves in the chat there. <laughs> oh, that's I, haven't, nice. I haven't been able to keep up. So. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's... yeah. So anyway, the, uh, there are folk... Still with us, 85 folk, people are, are watching us right now. So maybe we could get round to um, answering some of those questions that uh, went by the board there. Well, do you know yeah, what the, the one that I up. will uh, the, the one that I will do if uh, if Billy, if you're if you're still watching, uh, Billy asked how did they move uh, the big stones? And I so presume I he was back far enough to get it on screen. Hold on. I presume that, um, that Billy was talking about the lintels at Stonehenge, that kind of thing. But if you're just talking about... Or the about tops of dolmens, stones, I don't know. Are the capstones of dolmens? Yeah, anything like that. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the capstones of dolmens, now you see that's an interesting one. It's quite likely that they just made large mounds of earth and dragged them up the mound. And uh, I mean, a lot of dolmens were covered in earth anyway. Some weren't. Some were only partially covered, mm. but it's quite likely that they made mounds of earth, dragged the capstone onto the top, and then took the earth away again to leave them yeah. sitting on the top. 
but I recommend anybody to go on to um, – you're already on YouTube. I was going to say go on YouTube. <laughs> Look up Wally Wallington. Wally Wallington is an American engineer. He's retired now. Um, but if you look up Wally Wallington and Stonehenge, I can't remember the key words there, but there is a film. He's just one of those people who he thinks outside the box. And he just figured that this has to be something that can be done by a relatively small amount of people if you just think the right way. And <laughs> Wally put up his own trilothon in his backyard uh, using these massive blocks of concrete. And he did it just by clever counterbalancing and leverage. Watching the film of him doing it and some of the other stuff he's done mm. is breathtaking. It just goes to show that, you know, people come up with all these magical ideas and come up with all these fanciful notions of oh, they must have been able to levitate the stones. Now, you just need someone who's just smart enough to figure out a way of solving the problem. So yeah, Wally Wallington, look him up. However, it, it is a tough one, brilliant. you know. When we when we've been at Tinkinswood and looked at that forty ton yeah. monster, and um, Brown Brown Hills Dolman, Brown Browns Hill Dolman, Browns Hill, yes, um, uh, yeah, just phenomenal. You you'd really mm. do begin to wonder, and it's only yeah. when you're standing under them or beside them that you. Yeah. You know, it's all very well talking about them and knowing that they weigh forty tons, but you, when you're standing next to them. That's when yeah. the mind boggles. That you, yeah. you the, the mind. Turns I think it, to... it's um, it's worth um, also bearing in mind that that different sites require different thought processes, if you like. So, um, and a, and a good illustration of this is there are some megalithic sites in Korea, um, where there are blocks of stone that can be, uh, even a hundred tons, massive blocks of stone, that are what, they're dolmens. It's this vast piece of stone on these stumpy little legs. The <laughs> thing is that the stones were actually in situ. Yeah. And then what they did was they would dig earth out from underneath the stone, yeah. put a smaller stone in place as a supporting stone, and then keep digging. And as they, as they cleared earth out, they would put another supporting stone in. Until eventually they had all the, the, the you know the, the necessary supporting stones in place that they could take all the earth away and now you had this massive stone on its little legs, um, and so, yeah, I suspect uh, you know there are quite a number of sites uh, like around. That. Where, However, uh, um, Tinkinswood so. we know did not was not in situ. It came no, from no, <laughs> indeed. Uh, and when you see cases country. like um, there, there's a <laughs> one of the recumbent stone circles in Aberdeenshire, yeah, oh, gosh, um, yeah. Old Keeg. Oh, that's a forty which, ton. Which it? uh, it's a it's a forty ton lump of stone that uh, is on the top of a hill or close to the top of a hill, and they dragged it there from four miles away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's dedication. Yeah. <laughs> Right, you know. Um, so right, I've got just below that. Having scrolled back, there's a question that I think we should answer. Uh, it's from Jay. Hello, Jay. Uh, so it was, it says, "Were we ever refused access to a site on private land?" Jay, that is a fantastic <laughs> question. Nobody's ever asked, actually asked us that before. Well. Not on private land, I don't think. We didn't. We no, because most private landowners are pretty good. Yeah. About you know, if you're a custodian of a site, yeah, you let people visit. Yeah. Um, we. But my, my mind goes to the Brunaboyne, yeah, to the Boyne <laughs> Valley, and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also Caramore, Caramore uh, Megalithic Cemetery as well. The same thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you Both want to sites in Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. That was too funny. Yeah, yeah. we we arrived, <laughs> we arrived uh, late in the day um, at uh, at Nauth, which is an extraordinary site. Uh, yeah, we arrived late in the day. Oh, you no, know, but the thing is, we this is this the, it was the mirror of what had happened in at Caramore. At Caramore, that's yeah, true. Yeah, be, yes. because uh, yes. a, a few days it, before. It, 
the, that's true. It's true. I'm just remember the reason I remember Nauth so clearly is because it was the bloke with the wheelbarrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's like something out of a sitcom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, we we wanted to go in, and it was closed to the public. But there was a guy with one gate open, and he was doing some work, and we said, "Can we come in?" And he said, "I didn't see you, <laughs> and you didn't see me." <laughs> Away you go, lads. <laughs> yeah. uh, open the gate, and there we were, alone in the uh, complex of Mouth. In one of the most amazing sites in Britain. Yeah. Um, in fact, can we call that Britain? Yeah. Great Britain. In uh, the no, United no, Kingdom. No, careful, very careful. United, I know, we just get put <laughs> some Somebody actually was gravely offended by, um, apparently I said in the film, on a couple of occasions, I've referred to... Uh, sites in Britain when I should have been saying Ireland and I was talking about Great Britain uh, and British I should have been Isles. saying British Isles. Yeah. Yeah. Which and actually is fair cop. In, um, it is it's fair cop. You're always going to upset somebody. I don't mean yeah. to. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. Bite me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to have to be more But the thing was that had happened before when we were at, uh, at Caramel, only yeah. a few days before. We'd been standing outside the gate sort of looking forlorn because um, what's the name of the um, uh, government department that takes care of uh, all uh, Irish monuments no. and so on and so forth? Yeah, anyway, we couldn't get in. And um, one of the guys... <laughs> it was exactly the same thing. He said... I didn't see you. You didn't, you see, didn't me. see me. There you go, lads. <laughs> <laughs> different guys on different occasions. Yeah. It was just beautiful. I know. It's wonderful. So, yeah, uh, I hope that... Um, uh, yeah, I hope, yeah. Thank you for the we, question. We didn't then. get... Re the, the only place where we uh, were close to... Don't so, refuse um, sorry, to uh, Russian bot. I don't know your name. Or do Russian. I? I think I did, because uh, I engaged with, with um, um, whoever Russian bot is. Uh he has to rush, so I'm oh. just saying bye bye. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, oh, from Ireland. See you next time. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, uh, to, 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 uh, a request from Alec uh, to discuss the ceremonial sites. Well, that's a good one. Um, landscape evidence of agriculture or industrial process. Right. That's a deep dive. That's such a we, do you know we talk about this kind of thing all the time, uh, Alec. It, it's one of our things, and I think if we started to answer that question right now, we would be we would uh, leave you midnight. frustrated. We would leave uh, everyone frustrated. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for, forgive us if we don't start on that one because uh, uh, you know that's such a uh, it's a, such a great discussion to have. Um, but what it is, uh, we're, we're, we'll we've actually got mind. a number of things simmering on backbones yeah. that are specifically about those kinds of issues. Yeah. Um, because it, it's it's fascinating and little understood aspects of prehistory yeah. that you know we're pulling these bits together. So. So what uh, uh, what other question did you note down uh, from earlier? There, there? was. Um, oh, yeah. Go on. I'm going to sneeze. Lazy, pardon? No, go on. Sorry. Um, Lazy. I'm going to... <coughs> oh, bless Excuse you. me. Um, Lazzy asked about regional differences. Oh yes. And um, and it's like, well, how can we put this in a nutshell? There are significant regional differences mm -hmm. uh, for various different kinds of site. And so you can look, for example, at the Cumbrian stone circles as opposed to the recumbent stone circles in Aberdeenshire mm -hmm. or uh, or some of the stone circles in uh, uh, in the West Country. Uh, so for those of you not in Britain, the West Country, I'm talking about Devon and Cornwall uh, in the southwest of, of, um, of England. Now... The regional differences, um, I, I think that it's important not to think in terms of, um, uh, <laughs> they're not deliberate regional differences, it's just that there's a basic common purpose 
to these sites, but people separated by great distances, they always have slightly different ways of doing things. And you've also got the differences in local geology. So, yeah. for example, you go to uh, the Cumbrian stone circles and most notably uh, Swinside and Castle Rig, where these massive stones that make the site so imposing yeah. and majestic. Yeah. And it's because they've got the stones. Yeah. You go to places like, uh, so you, you go to uh, the Priscillas, you go to, uh, to Wales, where they haven't got big lumps of rock. All their stone circles are made with little ones, mm. with the exception of the capstone at uh, Tinkins Wood yeah. and maybe uh, the dolmen at Pentrifan. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are places. But generally speaking, it's because of the geology. And so that's why you can go to somewhere like, uh, like Julian asked about Bleasdale, and I suppose he will email us about that. Yeah. But, but Bleasdale Stone Circle, right over in the east, that was a timber circle. And the reason for the timber circles is because I haven't got any big rocks at all over no. there. Everything, everything was made of wood. Mm. So that's why there is nothing to see over in the east of uh, of England because it was all wood and it's all rotted away yeah you know? so so the regional differences are very significant but most of it is because of very localized um, problem solving if you see what I mean and the, there's also another perspective to it as well because there's also a temporal perspective you know we, we tend to because we can see them all in the landscape all at the same time now mm. it doesn't mean that they were built at the same time um, mm. the Cumbrian stone circles if we're to believe what we're told they are the earliest and just mm. last week we were talking about um, to our Patreon folk in the Monday Megalith about <laughs> stones in the south of Ireland and they're relatively recent you know we're talking about two, 1500 to almost 2000 years difference yeah, I, I'm not. I think I've got that about right. You know, if you take yeah. the earliest, yeah, yeah. like Castle Rig, and then you go to Ard Groom, which is you know, sort of Middle Bronze Age. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they uh, yeah. there's that to take into account uh, as well. Yeah. Were the people, uh, you know, three thousand, um, uh, four hundred BC? putting stone circles up for the same reason that people in the Brera Peninsula in uh, in um, in is it County Cork? Yes it is County County Brera County Peninsula, Cork isn't it? We're yes. Putting stone circles up uh, you know 1500 years later or thereabouts. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll make a preemptive public apology that my Irish geography is pretty shabby. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no that's, we'll it's true. I I think um, that I know we talked about um, the possibility that the um, the concentric ringed stone circles, um, the consent, you know, timber rings, but yeah. uh, but that those sites could have been for blood sports. Mm -hmm. The thing is, whether they were or not, you look at an arena today. So you know, take any major public sporting arena that it's a play, you know, it. it it's going to be hosting a rock concert next weekend and, uh, and maybe a Jehovah's Witnesses rally, uh, you know, next month and, you know, and, and football in between. That these massive meeting places serve multiple purposes. And so I think it's quite likely that, you know, you can look at the Roman arenas which are, to all intents and purposes, they're no different from any sporting arena today. So I, I think if that's 2,000 years of mm. continued usage, yeah. I don't see any reason to think that going back 2,000 years further back in the past, I still think that they were probably meeting places for multiple purposes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's true. They so were over a long period of time. Rupert, I'm conscious that um, uh, we have been live for an hour and 12 minutes. Goodness, have we really? We have. Uh, goodness doesn't uh, time fly. Fun. 
And folks, uh, you're still there. Amazing. There's a, there's a, a few <laughs> topics that people have brought up, and I want to touch on them, but we, we can't, we, um, we should keep it, uh, keep our, our answers it. just a bit, uh, a bit brief so, so we don't uh, stretch people's um, <laughs> attention. Though Patience. there are 95 people are, are watching the show, so... Oh. Yeah, uh, thank you for those who uh, 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 joined. And I'm sorry if I've missed, um, you know, the conversations and I've, I've missed a question uh, here, there, uh, and everybody, I mean, there's a conversation going on about Stanton Drew. Right. Another one, you know, that would uh, have us talking for another hour or so. Yeah. Um, you know, all these things we can do uh, specials on. Oh, by the way, while I'm, you know, sort of slightly off topic, there was a big thumbs up from a lot of people about the idea of having a watch party so oh okay uh, yeah so we'll we'll, we'll definitely uh, have proper <laughs> thoughts on that so did you have okay. another question that you'd taken down there rupert that we need no to it was only those address? three uh griff i remember if i remember rightly asked about the sea eagles in the tomb of the eagles and uh, whether we oh. thought that they hunted with them i don't think so it's a good question. A good Who did question. you say that was? Did you say Griff? Yeah. So Griff. It's a good question, Griff. Um, there's, there's, n n n it, maybe. The thing is, it's one of those things that there is, there's no evidence that can tell you either way. You know, you, you can only guess. It's a nice idea. Um, I, I suspect that, I mean, okay, a couple of things. Firstly, the eagles themselves were very late additions to the tomb. Um, and that's something yeah. that... It, that's right, they were. It, yeah. You know, it, it hasn't been known for the full duration that people have been talking about uh, the site. But mm. and so people were being buried in there for a long time mm. before these people suddenly had this new way of doing things and they put birds in there. Yeah. Now, it's quite possible that the birds were completely unrelated to the human burials. It is also possible, I mean, I'm just talking about ideas that people have put forward, that um, one of the things that uh, was very common in, uh, in Neolithic and Bronze Age burials was... Um, uh, um, was exhumation. You would leave bodies to rot and then you would inter their bones. Mm -hmm. Now, it's possible because they, they, they did have, the evidence shows that, they had this very clear connection with the ancestors. And that's something that you still see in indigenous people today. Can I, can I just uh, stop you a moment, actually? Yes. Because this bears on a question um, that um, uh, YouTube, um, I don't know what your name is, um, brought up. And that is with a question about the avoidance of fish in the Neolithic diet. So, so what you're saying could be very well be related to that and we've mm. got no way of getting inside the mindset you know that the, 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 mm. the reasons of the, and, and the, but the powerful reasons they would have been for people yeah. to have uh, um, yeah <clears throat> well the, the uh, one that i was going to mention which i think is pr is probably the most to me it seems the most plausible out of all you know all, there's so many ideas you could put forward but one i think is plausible is that you you put your people outside that you put your bodies outside to rot and then you inter their bones yeah. well if you've put the bodies outside to rot and the sea eagles um peck away at the rotting corpses they're actually you know maybe eating uh some of that flesh now it might be that you then regard the uh, the eagles as somehow having a connection with your ancestors because they've consumed part of your ancestors. Um, you know, that is possible. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I was not listening because I was distracted by something. Uh, Tim Lazenby said, would you believe, I put it on the screen, it said, you guys are the reason I went to Durham to study archaeology at aged 58. Wow. <laughs> wow. I hope that worked out all right for you, Tim. I hope you had a uh, blast. And, uh, yeah. 
Wow. See, I don't know what you to see say. What, what you say, you see. Um, That's having fantastic. an impact, making it making a difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell us more. Tell us more about that, Tim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> were, were you saying about, you know, that, that you know, the, the stunning thing about the fact that they weren't eating fish? And and the, but the correlation, but the the well, not correlation. The uh, uh, of that is, there aren't very many bodies in the land. I'm talking about Orkney here, you know, where yeah. the, uh, too many eagles, burials. Yeah, you know, the important ones are there, but nobody else is around. You, the the mm -hmm. kind of one assumption that's being worked on, you know, is that all that. Uh, uh, you know, on that island, that, that burials were at sea, or that all the or the mm. remains were fed to the sea. So maybe in their minds there was a a cycle going on of some sort. Yeah, there, yeah. and it, it could also be that if you were burying, uh, you know, if you're an island people and you are burying your people at sea. Well, I Phil, thank you for uh, being with uh, us. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, yeah. Phil. <clears throat> uh, if you're burying your people at sea and you know that they're being eaten by the fishes, then maybe that's why you don't eat the fishes. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, Andy uh, mentions the Queen, Queen Hill uh, tomb, um, where I don't know if there were a lot. Were there a lot of dog skulls? And I, I know that one has been recreated. It's a very sweet-looking doggy. Um, <laughs> it is a very sweet-looking doggy. The, but yeah, uh, yeah, and it's nice to know they had very nice. I've got a nice doggy down here. Actually, I won't bring him up. He's he's fast asleep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, who was it? Who was responsible for you know renaming Queen Hill Tomb the Tomb of the Beagles? Tomb of the Beagles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I oh, know. Dear. That did make me chuckle. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. So um, I'm just checking. Uh, have you got anything more there, Rupert? That we uh, that we missed? Um, no, no. I made notes of there's some um, interesting comments, but uh, uh, you know, touching on Tibetan sky burials and. Uh, oh, do you know yeah. what? I wanted a Tibetan sky burial. My wife said there was no way she was going to do that. Um, my my sons were not quite so uh, anti, but then they made it illegal anyway because because the vultures were getting yeah sick. Sue um, Butler says you can't bury many people in Orkney. The topsoil isn't very deep. Yes, well, yes, um, ain't that's that true. The truth? That's, that, that that's why they had to make such lavish tombs. Um, yeah, uh, you know, it, you, look at Maze Howe. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, um, many Native Americans left bodies out on platforms. That's from from Tracy. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Griff says yeah. thank you for the answer. Um, yeah. Thanks, Griff. And David Potter says let's not mention beavers. Let's, <laughs> let's move <swiftly> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, David. Don't start me off. Yeah. So. Um, what? Lassie says, what got you guys into the Neolithic in the first place anyway? Ah, oh, thank you for that question. That's, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a neat one. I'll, I'll, I'll go first on that. <coughs> uh, yeah. When I was growing up, we lived uh, near Oxford. We lived in Oxfordshire um, in Banbury. And uh, we used to go on outings into the countryside, you know, mum and dad and, 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 uh, and family. And... Uh, I specifically remember being taken to the Rollwright Stones, and it's, there's a there's two things going on. You know, you br bring a child to, you know, remember this: if you have children, you can take them round to these places. They may look bored as hell, and uh, you know they might complain a bit. And I can't. I I have a memory of being, what are we doing here? But there's some part of it stuck with me all that time. There's something about the enigma that strikes anybody, whatever age, that has their mind start asking questions. And I think that's what happened with me uh, mm. at, at the at the roll rights. And it's almost been an unconscious thing ever since that, you know, when I've, we've been out with my kids and we've sought out anything on the map you know not fanatically I, it's uh it's been a sort of gradual thing with me and and very much an aesthetic th thing for me i just wanted 
the the th this was, standing with stones was the the kind of dream of pointing cameras at these things to capture the en enigma and and all the rest of it, and that it's blossomed into actually knowing stuff about them. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> that wasn't on the uh, that wasn't yeah. on the horizon. What about you, Rupert? I was just always from very small. I was interested in history generally, um, and uh, you know, get, get, going into geology and paleontology, anything that was in the deep past and had its own kind of mystery to it. Digging up fossils for me when I was a little kid was just amazing you know to to take something out of a stone that you knew you were the only human being who had ever seen that that's an amazing thing and and so then that extending to prehistoric sites just everything that's going on in your mind usually completely wrong but um but just you know it it develops this kind of magic and then uh when i was a lot older uh so in my 20s and I started backpacking, uh, you know, places like Dartmoor and the Brecon Beacons. I'd just go off on my own. Um, and, uh, you know, and you, you come across these ancient sites that in, in the middle of nowhere. And it's just so intoxicating. And that just spun on. I then, you know, was asked if I would start taking people on uh, tours, particularly on the Isle of Man, actually. Um, some of the archaeology on the Isle of Man is utterly unique and extraordinary. Um, and it kind of grew, you know, just over the years. It just, uh, it's something that the fascination never went away. <laughs> so, Love it. So, Amber, I think it's Jennifer is in shock. She's just noticed. Have you two gone teetotal? Oh, <laughs> thank you for asking, Jennifer. Yeah. Um, no. No. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm on a, you, I'm on a detox. I have, I haven't had a drop of alcohol for uh, six weeks now. Who? Um, yeah. uh, I'm just being kind to my body for a bit. That's yeah. all. For the benefit of people who haven't been on a live with us before, it has been a tradition where we that we have had a glass of red wine each. Yes. Yes. So yes. people have got very used yes. to that, and they're probably in shock that we're not. Yes. Uh, I don't have a glass yes. of wine. Right I always now. try to refill them as quietly as possible, so people don't know how many glasses I've had during a broadcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I've, um, I've just, I don't know how long I'll keep it going. Probably three months, because uh, oh, <laughs> I was saying to a doctor friend of mine, I haven't had a drop of alcohol for a month, and I haven't noticed any difference at all. And he said, "You've got to give up for at least three months to notice a difference." Oh. God, okay. So I'll, I'll probably do it for three months just to see if I notice a difference. But I have got two very nice bottles of red wine yeah. waiting for the day as I ch change my mind and decide yeah. I've had enough. Yeah, Tim says we have to do a program on Stennis. Um, well, yes, <laughs> Stennis, the whole thing, the whole yeah. complex. Gee, yeah. we must get um, and, uh, um, Nick Card. We've yes. got to get Nick Card. On on a on a podcast. Do you know what? What, 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 what? No, no, no. Nick Card. Note to self. I haven't got him down on my list of people to sue email. Oh well, right. Okay, that's good. Um, I think uh, we must get him before the end of the year because he'll be twiddling yes. his thumbs. He's got nothing to do he, this summer. Absolutely, as will, will a lot of them. He'll be glad of the contact. <laughs> um, it's true. Do you know what? The, one of the things that um, is very important to us in whatever we produce. And that is that we are telling you stuff that you don't know. You know, yeah. we really have to dig to find these things out. Um, you know, it's important. There's no point in us just giving you information that you could find in any book anywhere. We like to be telling you stuff that you wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, so to do something about Stennis, um, which is, ugh, apart from being... Is it the oldest of all the uh, the uh, megalithic sites? I think it is, isn't it? Um, yeah. uh, there has to be an aspect to it, other than saying, look at these amazing stones. There has to be something about it that we can tell you. Um, so uh, <laughs> that's where we have to go. 
pardon the pun again, you know, but that's where we have to go really digging deep to find more new information. So. And that's where we find um, this is the encouraging thing because uh, from the few um, archaeological conferences that Rupert and I have attended, you get the feeling very much that we're in the right place at the right time. And archaeologists in academia are very conscious of the fact that, you know, they write these papers, they do the research, you know, often taking them years and years and years. It goes into a paper and doesn't see the light of day. Maybe you'll see a headline or two flash across the Daily Mail or, you know, what have you. But the depth of the paper never gets really out there, never gets really mm. re revealed. And mm. so, you know, having the contacts now that we are starting you know, really have in, in the archaeological world, it, we're feeling that's the great, uh, you know, it's one of our um, raisons d'etre, um, it's a bit of our mission to mm. be a bridge to that information you know, that's normally yeah. going to be hidden. <laughs> but, you know, that is information that is authoritative and, mm. um, and, uh, and it, as absolutely. up-to-date as possible. Uh, do you know, the, the thing is that, you know, we are learning all the time. And one of the exciting things for us is that we're generalists. We're deliberately generalists. We enjoy being generalists. We don't, uh, you know, we don't go too hard down any single avenue because there is so much to find out. And you know, just, uh, just, can I just say something, Rupert? So I think it's a toss-up between Stennis and Castlerigg, talking about the oldest stone circle. Okay. Yeah. I still think it's Stennis, but um... I think it's Castlerigg. Carry okay. on. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, no, that's all right. Um, uh, academic archaeologists, because it's what they have to do, uh, they're focused very much in specific areas that consume their research. And so there's an awful lot of joining the dots that is dependent on people like us mm -hmm. from the outside who actually start seeing how these things might fit together. Now, one of the things that cropped up for us recently, so obvious, <laughs> so obvious, um, was we were talking to, we mentioned him earlier on, uh, Duncan Garrow, yeah. uh, who's doing the work on the Cranogs. Now, Duncan has also done a lot of work on different types of burials and shrouds. Now, the interesting thing is that there are a lot of sites where um, some of the things that have been found in burials are a single amber bead, yeah. for example. And, and everyone's always got a single amber bead. There must be some kind of ritual significance to this single bead. I think, well, no, that was probably a bead on a drawstring. Yeah. actually and it might have been a bag that some of the grave goods were in or it might have been a shroud that you know that had a cord on it that pulled the the, the shroud tight or something like that and obviously all the fabric has rotted away and you're just left with the bead and it's like do you know what the amount of times i've been reading what's come out of a burial and seen single bead oh, yeah. of course really good point and it seems so obvious when yeah, you yeah. say it that yeah. you know and and uh, watch out for the interview because we cover that uh, very well with yes, we uh, with Duncan. Uh, Tim uh, asks the question: uh, Wasn't Stennis the place where the legend says it was built by black people from over the sea? That was Kalanish. No, that was Kalanish. Yes, that was Kalanish, and well remembered. Mm. Um, and it's um, it's a lovely one, isn't it? <laughs> Can't say any more about it. That's yeah. that's all that remains of the legend. So bearing in mind, we are at ninety minutes. We are an hour and a half, and and uh, wow. I don't want to uh, you know test people's um, take for granted <laughs> people's time of a of no. A well, especially evening. if we want them to do it again. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 and Tim says, please, we need to access any archaeological info. Please let him know. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, that's Thank most you. generous. Um, okay, I, I, there isn't anything that I've caught that's sort of outstanding that uh, um, uh, we can um, usefully answer right now. So I think we should think about drawing to a close. Oh, tell you what, talking about clothing adornments. 
<laughs> that is a yes. prehistory guy's badge. It's kind of like a blue Peter badge, really. It's it's, it's reserved for, uh, um, you know, special services, uh, and also um, uh, people who uh, subscribe, uh, enroll as uh, Patreon supporters uh, at five dollars a month or more. Get one of these. They get a badge. Eventually in the post when, <laughs> when the lockdown's over and, and we can get to the post office properly and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so that's about it. I'm I, I'm I'm all out. Um so, well, it's, Sue says, it's... Can we do this every week? <laughs> uh, we kind of do actually in Patreon, but I think there's a there's an opportunity here, you know, be, to hmm. talk to because I mean, the crazy thing is we've gone from, uh, well, we have nearly 3,000 probably more new subscribers over the past uh, week, days? Ten, 10 days. It's been crazy. It's not that. Huh? Um, yeah, yeah, actually, no, you're right. Four, I'm thinking of, it's, it's, uh, thinking yeah, of I mean, it's views really on, uh, been, been crazy. And yeah. so we, you know, really recognize you, you that are watching now. And also, you know, that we've suddenly yeah. grown this uh, community that came in simply because they saw Standing With Stones. So, mm. yes, expect us to turn up on specifically to speak to you, YouTubers, um, more often in the future. I think that's something you can count on. Yeah, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. Do you think, uh, to finish off, King Alfred, yep. Pardon? the one and only King Alfred. I tell you, do you think present day people can still learn from the past to create a better future for everyone? Do you know, I was mm. really called you King Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, I think that's one of the part, part of the reasons we do this. There is something, you know, it, it's um, uh, there's, there's something about looking looking back, you know, and you you get a when you look back in time to a certain extent you get a mirror. You're looking in a mirror, mm. uh, or you or it makes you look in a mirror a bit, you know. Yeah. So, a life looking it's, back is often you know turns out to be a, a a life examined in a way. So well, you you need it's that old thing of you need to know where you've come from. Mm to have a clearer sense of where you should be going. Mm. And uh, and I, I certainly think that we have... It, it's that progress is... Uh, development is not necessarily progress. You know, we might be romping forwards because we think we're so damn clever. Yeah. And uh, and sometimes, well, look at the state we're in now, you know, that, yeah. that isn't it an irony that we've, uh, you know, we've got ourselves a pandemic which has been on the cards for years. So, you know, throw all the conspiracy theorist stuff out the window. We've been talking about there's going to be a pandemic coming for easily 20 years. And now that we've got one, and you look at what's happening globally with pollution levels have just gone to, well, they haven't gone down to nothing, but they've, they've reduced anyway. You know, all these things that we're saying, well, how are we going to do that? Well, here you go. This is how you do it. We need to completely reassess at the moment. Which is good, you know, it's, yes, I think we do need to look back at the past and look at how people used to live in harmony with the earth uh, and not exploit it all the time. Nice timing with the question, Alfred. Thank you very much indeed. You may be conscious of the uh, Standing With Stones music coming up. The, in the Standing With Stones lullaby. <laughs> <laughs> with that, thing, I think, folks, we will say good night to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes, uh, thank you very much. And uh, here's to, to the next time. Um, thumbs up to we'll you all. See, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. See ya.